Namaste and a very, very good afternoon to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, we'll be talking about the prerequisites to perform time series analysis. Specifically, we'll be talking about a very interesting test, which is called as augmented Dickey-Fuller's test. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to perform the augmented Dickey-Fuller's test using R Studio. May I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by talking about the data set that I'll be working on. As you can see here, this is the data set that I have. The first variable is month and the second variable is the number of passengers. This data set is an inbuilt data set in R. This data set consists of monthly totals of the international air passengers from 1949 to 1960. You can see here, in the month of January 1949, the number of passengers were 112. In February, it increased to 118. In the next month of March, it became 132. When you look at the last record, the last record here represents December 1960. In the month of December of 1960, the number of passengers were 432. One of the important assumptions behind autoregressive models as well as moving average models is that autoregressive as well as moving average models are not applicable on non-stationary series. I repeat, both autoregressive as well as moving average models are simply not applicable on non-stationary series. These models are applicable only on stationary series. So in case you have a non-stationary data, the first task before you would be to stationarize the data and then model the data. We'll be looking at how to do some of these exploratory data analysis and how to check for stationarity in R Studio. With this background, let me proceed to show some of the codes in R Studio. You can see here, these are some of the codes that I have already written. I will be executing these codes and showing you some of the results of time series analysis. Firstly, I've installed the package called as T-Series. Unless you install this package, you will not be able to run the augmented Dickey-Fuller's test. The augmented Dickey-Fuller's test is used to check whether the data is stationary or non-stationary. I've already installed this package. So in line number three, I will be just calling the library. In line number five, you can see we are trying to load the data set. As I've already mentioned, this particular data set is inbuilt into R. Once you are able to install this particular package T-series, you will be able to access and load the data set, namely Air Passengers. Let me now load the data set. If you want to display the data set, you just have to type Air Passengers. You can see here, let me expand this particular window. From 1949 all the way up to 1960, for 11 years, we have the air passengers data. You can see here, this is uh, what we have is basically the monthly level information from Jan all the way up to December. This is good data for us to build any time series model. Now we proceed to the next step. The next step would be to perform EDA or exploratory data analysis. As part of the EDA or exploratory data analysis, there are two things that I'll be doing. One, I'll be constructing a simple time series plot. Secondly, we will be using a box plot. Let's first begin by plotting the air passengers data. You can see here, we have been able to construct a simple line chart for the air passengers data. I will now go ahead and fit a regression line on the same. Let me zoom this particular chart. 
So this is how the distribution of air passengers is for different values of years. You can see here in the x-axis, what we have is the yearly level information. All the way from 1949 till 1960, we have information about the air passengers. We are using air passengers information on the y-axis. There are a couple of important observations that we need to make. Clearly, there is an increasing trend. If you observe the trend here, it is increasing with respect to time. So, one point that we can conclude by observing this particular graph is that there is a strong trend component in the data. The second, the second important point that we observe here is that the variance keeps on increasing with time. As you see here, in the initial years, the variance is less. But as you progress, the variance keeps on increasing with respect to time. So these are the two important observations that we make from the graph. First is trend component. Trend is the enemy of stationarity. If you have a trend component, it clearly means that the data is not stationary. We need to find a way to stationarize the data. Secondly, the variance keeps on increasing with time. This again is a serious issue and therefore we need to address both these issues before applying the augmented Dickey-Fuller's test. So this is one of the first plots that I'll be constructing. Let me close this particular graph. Nextly, as you can see in line number 14, we will be constructing a box plot for the air passengers broken down by monthly level information. So this is the box plot. I'm going to zoom this. You can see here, the cycles are present in the x-axis. There are 12 months. And for each month, we have a box plot. In the y-axis, as before, we are using the air passengers. And in the x-axis, we have the distribution of the 12 months. Now, what is really important is the month of seven and the month of eight. Month number seven is for July and month number eight is for August. If you look at the median value, the median value is very, very high for both these months. That is, for July and August, the average value of air passengers is higher than the rest of the months. This is a straightforward conclusion that we can draw by looking at the thick line at the center. Remember, the thick line at the center represents the median value of the air passengers. If you look at the month of January, February, March, and April, the average value is not as high as for the months of July and August. What does this suggest? Because the average value of air passengers for the months of July and August is very high, we can go ahead and conclude that there is a strong seasonal component in the data. This clearly implies that there is a seasonality factor in the data. The second important thing is, when you look at the size of the box and the size of the whiskers, clearly the size of the box as well as the whiskers is wider for the seventh month and for the eighth month. Look at the spread of the distribution. This is the maximum and this is the minimum for the month of July. And this value represents the maximum for the month of August. My apologies. This month represents the minimum for the month of August. And this value represents the maximum for the month of August. So since the spread is very, very high, we can say that there is more variance or there is more dispersion for the two months, namely July and August. Now, when you compare the other boxes, for Jan, Feb, March, relatively, the size of the box along with the whiskers is lesser. If the size of the box along with the whiskers is lesser, you can conclude that the spread is lesser. So from this box plot, there are 
very, very important insights that we can extract. The first is the variance and the mean value in July and August is much higher than the rest of the months. I repeat, the variance and the mean value in July and August is much higher than rest of the months. Secondly, there's a strong seasonal factor or seasonality component in this data. Let me now close this particular window. So far, what we have done is to examine two or three important points. One is the trend component. Second one is the spread of the data or the variance. Thirdly, we also looked at the, seasonal, uh, the seasonality component. Now, these things are very, very important. Why? Even before you go ahead and use the ADF test or the augmented dickey fuller's test, we need to address these two issues before checking for stationarity using the ADF test. I repeat, we need to address two very, very important issues before we test the stationary part of the series. The first important issue that we need to address is we need to remove unequal variances. I repeat, we need to remove unequal variances. Question is, how do we remove the unequal variances? To remove the unequal variances, we use a very simple technique, namely take the log transformation of the variable. By taking the log of the original variable, we will be able to remove unequal variances. The second important point here is we need to address the trend component. When you looked at the time series plot, it clearly indicated the presence of a trend component. Question is, how do we remove the trend component? How do we detrend the data? The answer is very simple. We need to use a very important technique, namely differencing of the series. Once you difference the series, we will be able to address the trend component. So as a last step, you can see here, this is the code that we will be using, the ADF code or augmented Dickey Fuller's test to check for stationarity. This is a very simple function, ADF.test. And you will be able to see that I've used difference function followed by log function on the original data. I am not passing the original variable as it is. I am using the difference function on the log. So first we are applying log and upon that log values, we will be using the difference function. Why? I've already just now told you that log is used to remove unequal variances and differencing of the series helps me address the trend component. A very in, a important point here is that you can see here under the option for alternative, we are specifying stationary. We are specifying stationary and k equals zero represents the order of the lag. So when I specify k equals zero, this is a zero order lag. Let me go ahead and run this particular test. You can see here, this is the output that we have generated. There is a heading which says augmented Dickey Fuller test. We are using the data of air passengers. The Dickey Fuller test value is minus 9.6003. This is the Dickey Fuller's test. As you can see here, the lag order equals zero. And the p-value is 0.01. The p-value is 0.01. How do we interpret the p-value? I'll just be explaining in a few moments from now. Look at the alternative hypothesis. R is framing the alternative hypothesis by itself. So R has framed the alternative hypothesis as stationary, which automatically means that the null hypothesis here is that the series is non-stationary. I repeat, the null hypothesis in Dickey Fuller's test is that we assume that the data is non stationary and the alternative hypothesis is that the data is stationary. We also have a warning message. It says that in the ADF.test, p value is smaller than the printed value. So, all that it is trying to say is that the p value, the actual p value, 
may be a lot smaller than 0 0.01. Now, to help interpret the output of the Dickey Fuller's test, what I will be doing is I will open up a Word document and take you through a step by step procedure of understanding augmented Dickey Fuller's test for stationarity. You can see here the null hypothesis here is that the data is non stationary. This is what is the statement under null hypothesis. What is the alternative hypothesis? The alternative hypothesis is exactly opposite of the null hypothesis, wherein we are claiming that the data is stationary. I hope these two statements are very clear. The first step is to frame the null hypothesis. Second step is to frame the alternative hypothesis. What is the level of significance that we will be using here? The level of significance that we will be using here is 5%. So we will be comparing the p-value that we will be obtaining with 0 0.05. Now you can use 10% or 1% as well. It is entirely your call. But here for this particular exercise, I am using 5% as the level of significance. The test statistic is ADF or augmented Dickey Fuller's test. Look at the decision criteria that we will be using. There are two statements here. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. So when p is low, null will go. Therefore, I'm saying when the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. When you looked at the value of P in R studio, the value of P that we got was 0 0.01. So we are getting a value of 0 0.01. So what is the conclusion of this exercise? The conclusion of this exercise is that since the, since the P value is 0 0.01, which is less than 0 0.05, we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. I repeat, we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the variable air passengers is stationary. So this is how we can use the augmented Dickey Fuller's test to test if the data is stationary or not. Once you are able to establish that there is stationarity in the data, what you can do is you can go ahead and apply any kind of time series modeling. As in this case, we saw that the series is clearly stationary. Since the series is stationary enough, we can go ahead and do any kind of time series modeling. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we saw what are some of the prerequisites for us to do time series analysis. Remember, one of the most important prerequisites is that for both autoregressive as well as moving average, both autoregressive as well as moving average methods are not applicable on non-stationary series. Further, we looked at how we can stationarize the data. We looked at the presence of the trend component, we looked at the presence of seasonality using two different plots, namely the time series plot as well as the box plot. Before using the augmented Dickey Fuller's test, we need to check for two important considerations. First is make sure that we remove unequal variances. Right? We need to remove unequal variances. How do you remove the unequal variances? We can take a simple log transformation. Second point before applying the ADF test is that you need to address the trend component. How do you address the trend component? Simply by differencing the series. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. Once again, have a great day ahead.